Good afternoon, my name is Aloysius. Thank you so much for joining us here. I'm with Vintage Radio, of course. And today, just introducing everybody who's here for the um, chat itself, we have Avi, who's going to bring us through uh, his presentation on retirement. And later on, we're going to have a chat um, where we will involve, as you can see, the gentleman over there, Brian Richmond from Vintage Radio SG, and of course, our very beautiful Rahima Rahim as well. She's here to share her experiences. Now, um, just a couple of things to share with everybody before we get started. The thing is that Singapore is going to be really silver in the coming years. We're talking about, you know, 20 to 25% silver. And the good thing about it is that there's an opportunity for everybody to be a part of the silver economy. So what better way to get ready than like right now? And for that, I'm going to throw you over to our speaker, Abi, to bring us through your presentation. Over to you, Abi. Thank you, Alexis. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's go through this. Uh, so, before we begin, I'd just like to thank uh, C3A for giving me the opportunity to talk about making a successful transition. Uh, what I'll take you through over the next uh, maybe 20, 20, 25 minutes is how do you think through one of the most stressful transitions in your life? Yeah. All of us go through three transitions in life and which are typically very stressful. The first one is when you are picking a career, you just finished your studies, picking what to do. The second one is your midlife crisis, is what is popularly called the midlife crisis, is when you are 15, 18 years in the job and you are like, okay, what am I really doing here? And the final one is when you know that you are going to stop working and you don't know what to do next. One Friday you are working, next Monday you wake up and you are sitting at home and your wife is telling you to get out of the house because she doesn't like you at home. Anyway, that's, I'm kidding. So, I will take you through three things. One is a mindset that you need to plan for this. The second one would be a process. It's a four-step process. And the final one is a toolkit. Now, I'll not really talk about a toolkit here because there are lots of tools in this kit, but this is what we will go through today. I'll talk about the new model of life. I will talk also about how you monetize skills you already have. How would you reskill? How would you upskill for 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 to to leverage or use the silver opportunity which Allah just mentioned? The third thing is talk about mindset process toolkit which I just mentioned, and finally it would be the four step process about how you think through this. Okay, so let's first start with with this. Walt Disney is supposed to have said this. Now there's no way I can verify it, but he said this is. Growing old is mandatory, right? You cannot stop the march of time. But growing up is optional. And as you can see in the picture there, the 71 year old man is riding his, he's on a roller coaster for a 12,000th time. I don't even want to imagine how long he's been on roller coasters, but he's 71 and he's enjoying life. Yep. So that's what the theme of this discussion is going to be. How do you really be curious about what to do next? How do you try out stuff? So, what's the new map of life or the new model of life? So, on one side, you look at the old model of life, right, which, which is very clearly structured. You have first phase where you study and you play because you can, don't do pretty much anything else. You have this phase in the middle, which is called middle life, where you work and you have your leisure time, which is your annual leave that every company gives you or whatever 20 days a year that you get, right? And then you moved into the last phase of your life, which is, oh, I, all the money I saved up, I will now use to travel, to play golf, to do all the stuff that I really wanted to do, but never had the time or the money to do. That whole model. Now, there's a new model here, right? Which basically is, whether it's leisure, whether it's education or whether it is work, it's all going to vary throughout your early, throughout your life. Let's say when you're studying, now you have kids who are 16 and 17 years old who work. They do assignments, they work in restaurants, they're making money, so they're working. They also have leisure, right? And they are studying at the same time. Then you move to the middle part of your life. There are times where you will be working on your own, what is called a gig job. There are times when you will be working for somebody. There are times when you set up a business on your own, so you're working, right? But the important thing in this middle stage, which you don't see in the earlier stages, is that you do have an element of learning because you are picking up new skills, you are taught new things in life, right? So you are actually going back to, to college in a way, 
there are executive education programs now which people go through which is a way of learning and of course you have the element of leisure which you all do and then you enter the what is now the most significant phase of your life which is the last part right now we talk about it as retirement i prefer to call it rewirement but let's not debate about the semantics right but to me that stage of your life is what gets represented where you can monetize your skills this talk for the next 20 minutes we will go through how do you decide what skills you have how do you decide to reskill or upskill them and then how do you monetize them or how do you use them in a way that will that will help you lead a good fulfilling last 20 25 years of your life right so you see that people work people will 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 have fun and people will also learn so there is an element of lifelong learning in this and i think that's where c3a comes in right c3 and skills future comes in so alosh has briefly mentioned the silver economy as you can see there are five countries on this graphic singapore one of the smallest countries there has the largest silver economy potential the, the research was done by uh, an aging institute and what they looked at was not only the number of people but also what the spending capability was the skills level were and so on and so forth right so that is what actually came out to be for their uh, for silver singapore came out to be the largest economy how do you monetize skills these are quotations this is again uh, from ministry of health uh, it's an action plan for aging the number one initiative is employability how do you increase the employability of your early of your older workers how do you get to workplaces which allow for great interaction between the younger workers and the older workers right and you can see a quote there i want to work for as long as i can it keeps my mind active if you have an active mind health will follow then the second one is lifelong learning again because the session is focused on upskilling and reskilling lifelong learning becomes very very important okay you are never too old to go back to school c3a has courses to teach you how to do facebook how to do tiktok and good stuff like that right uh, skills future has a bunch of courses around whatever you want to do you want to learn painting you want to learn chinese calligraphy you can do all that right so this is the portal which is a skills future portal which is now being which is developed by the singapore government and i think it is it is one of the best portals in the world for skills development they have thousands of courses there and i kid you not thousands i mean navigating that is is itself a challenge but if you guys can get to there then you will be able to actually search for any of the courses you want and you'll see them pop up you can you can you can see the qr code on the screen and if you map it to if you scan it you'll be able to get to the site for skills future okay skills future essentially is built on one premise that it is lifelong learning doesn't matter if you're 80 years old or 75 years old you could be 25 years old you will learn new skills you can base you can do skills based on your interest okay all right so so far we've gone through the why where is the opportunity right so now let's talk about how we will use this opportunity so three things required to use this opportunity one is a mindset the second thing is a four step process and the third thing are the, is a toolkit of the tools required for you to be able to generate ideas for your retirement and try out prototype those ideas or try them out so let's talk about mindset first okay i call it design thinker mindset but design thinker is not a designer mindset they're two different things a design thinker mindset is a problem solution mindset you have a problem you have a goal how do you get there a designer mindset is okay i want to create a piece of furniture i want to create some art i want to create song it's a very creatively inclined mindset design thinker is a problem solver for that firstly you need to make sure that you articulate the problem well right so we call it reframing but the idea is how do you pose a problem as a question such that it can be solved i will talk a bit more about it in the next slide but for now just keep that at the back of your mind then the other two things which you need to be which you need to which you may have or may need to develop is try stuff and by try stuff means be more action oriented as human beings the older you get the more you tend to analyze right but in this case if you want to be a design thinker and you want to try out stuff in retirement just try it out what's the worst that can happen you'll fail right 
So what's the big deal? You learn from your failures, which is where the failure immunity comes around. You try something, you fail. But like somebody said, it's 50-50, right? It's a 50% chance that you will succeed. So if you succeed, well and good, you're already on the first path, or the first step towards doing stuff in your retirement or in the last 20 years of your life, which is extremely rewarding. Then I will just talk about one more, which is be curious. Now, you know, just a story. A few years ago at Stanford, I was asked, what is that? What did you lose when you moved, when you became an adult? I thought hard about it. And I said the the ability I lost when I became an adult is to be curious. The older we grow, the more experience teaches us that curiosity doesn't pay. Learn from past experiences, which is valid for a while. But one could argue that life and the world around us is changing so fast and so much that maybe life's experiences are not valid anymore. But it's good to ask why. Think of your grandkids. Think of your kids when they were like 10 years old, right? Is you would see that they will always ask the question why. And that is why I, it's a very important mindset to develop. It's just be curious about life. Be curious about the environment. Be curious about things you want to try. So here we have a design thinker mindset, right? So now let's move on to the process. I like to call it the four step process because people remember numbers. And when I, when I articulate it, you can go one, two, three, four. And yeah, I got in there, right? So there's a four step process. And this is always used also for any design thinking problems that are meant to be solved. Design thinking is used by the Singapore government to refine the processes for tax. The way the recent Adop digital adoption of your pay now, pay la, pay, all those stuff that we went through in COVID was a design thinking approach to solving a problem. The trace together app is a design thinking solution to how do we keep people in contact, right? So you actually have solutions that you can see which have been built by design thinking. So like I said, four steps. The first step in any design thinking is how well do you know the user? In this case, it is you, right? So. How well do you know the user? So how well do you know yourself? So there's a whole six facets of self-assessment. I'll show that in the next slide. But that's the first thing is how well do you know yourself? The second thing is how well have you defined the problem or the goal, which is what are you trying to do? How well have you defined that? The third thing is once you know what drives you, what excites you, what gets you going in the morning, and you define what you want to do. How do you generate ideas around it? How do you brainstorm? How do you use your network, your significant other, your kids, your friends, your relatives to give you ideas about what you can do with your life? Okay. The fourth part. Sure. Now you've been through all this. You've got a list of ideas, right? So now you go, okay, I will pick the top two or three of them and I will test them out. I will prototype them. So think of prototyping as a quick experiment, quick test, right? So just to give an example of what I mean by prototyping is if I was designing a chair for a senior citizen right now, since we're in the senior citizen forum, do you think I'll make a whole chair before I try it out on that person? I won't. I'll first show them a cardboard cutout shape. I will make a model, a dummy model. I'll show it to them, right? Then they're going to say, you know, I don't like this. I don't like that. Do this, do that. Put an arm, put in backrest, all the good stuff. So you change the prototype. So you learn from the first test, which is I showed you this model didn't work, right? And finally, you after multiple iterations, you kind of go through and say, okay, now you make a solid prototype which they can test, which they can sit on, they can use, because you're going far along the way to say that, yeah, this is what I like. So prototyping is doing different iterations and learning from those iterations and modifying it such that they become better and better. So in this case, when you do your ideas, you keep trying them out to see which, why, which ones of them succeed, which ones of them fail. And what do you do from failure? You don't get depressed. You learn from your failure, right? Why did this fail? That's the learning. So like I said, failure immunity is a mindset. Curiosity is a mindset. Try stuff is a mindset. You know, can you see how it, those mindsets are getting linked to when you try stuff? Okay. So let's go to the first one. How well do you know yourself? Okay. 
there are six facets which are usually in a workshop that I conduct, we go over two days or four days. We go through all these facets, okay? There are facts, there are facets around how strong are my relationships, how financially financially secure am I, what does my health look like, how emotionally, physically, resilience-wise. The part I'm going to talk about is only the skills piece, okay? Which you see highlighted in that slide there. Is what are your skills and what are your character strengths and how can you use those to actually develop some ideas in the future. Okay, let's talk about skills. This is a, is a list of skills which the World Economic Forum has come, come out as the required skills for 2025. Okay, now one can argue that these skills are relevant for the younger population, you know, the kids who are growing up, the middle aged people. But I have specifically highlighted the ones which you can see are very, very important to us. And when I mean us, I am a senior as well. You see, I'm not a sprightly 35 year old talking to you about how to live life as a 60 year old. Sorry, no, I'm there as well. Okay. The skills are around leadership, they are around creativity, they are around problem solving, they are around resilience. We all have that, nothing new, right? So just because these skills are not, we should, the takeaway of this is that all those skills are relevant even to 60 year olds, even to 50 plus year olds. They are not necessarily relevant for 20 year olds because as you notice, these are not hard skills. That's not knowledge. They're not asking you, do you know coding? They're asking you, can you work well with people? That's the difference. So. If you look at the skills and strengths toolkit, again, somehow I like three, right? Because the number three stays in people's head. Four is too much, one is too little. So three works. Uh, there are three sets of skills and strengths we look at. One is what are your hard skills, which is what do you know, right? Are you an engineer? Are you a doctor? Are you a, a lawyer? What do you know? Those are your hard skills. That's knowledge. Your soft skills are what you show, right? Can you work well with people? Are you good at communication? Can you communicate well, right? Are you, for example, in this case, do you work well in a team? I'm just highlighted some examples. And then you have the third thing in a toolkit, which is what I call character strengths. I mean, I didn't call them character strengths. They are called character strengths. Though they are aspects of your personality that you tend to use the most. All of us are individual human beings. All of us have different personality traits. And some of them we are born with, and some of them are inculcated in us by our parents, by our uncles, aunts as we grow up, right? So character strengths are aspects of your personality that you use the most. For example, perseverance, <laughs> humor, honesty. These are all character strengths. These cannot be learned and these are not soft skills. Okay? You are either born with it or it's inculcated in you. Okay? Now, which, will lead, which leads me to the next obvious question is where do I find all this out? So if you, I mean, you lived for 35, 40 years of your life, right? Or work life. You know your hard skills already. You know who you are. You know what you've learned. I'm sure if you work in a company, your company feedback has always told you, yeah, these are your strong points. These are your soft skills. You are analytical. You work well in a team or you work well individually, whatever it is, right? So you, they know, they know your soft skills and you're told your soft skills. Character strengths is what no company will ever tell you. Okay. So if you want to find out what your character strengths are, this is where you go. It's via character.org. Again, the QR code, feel free to scan the QR code. It will throw up a list of survey questions. Now from those survey questions, they give you a list. They give you, I think, between 24 to, 24 to 28 <coughs> character strength map. They tell you these are the five that you use the most. These are the five that are very relevant to you. And this is the what you use the least, but then you still part of your character strength somewhere, right? I did it. And I can, I, I was, some of the results surprised me uh, because you get stuff like justice, you get stuff like uh, charitable. Those are the kind of character strengths that you get, right? Charitable surprised me because I thought I was not very charitable, but I guess I was wrong. At least I answered that question that they thought that was, it was a, a, a character strength for me, okay? So go to the site, you can you can either type that straight in or you can access, scan the QR code and you'll be able to get the character strengths. So now in the self-assessment part of how well do you know yourself, 
the skills facet is what you know hard skills soft skills character strengths okay let's move to step two how do you define your goal or a problem such that it is solvable all right so this is where i will here's how you define a problem or a goal okay if you look at the the red box it says i'm going to retire and i don't know what to do next i'm not sure what to do next that's a very common sentiment sentiment it's a feeling it's been expressed as a feeling right do you think feeling is solvable uh, debatable you know some of them are solvable some of them are not but in this case it's clearly not solvable because it doesn't help you generate ideas however if you were to ask yourself the question how do i generate ideas that will in my retirement that will energize me now that is a question you are asking yourself and you yourself then can answer that question you see because it's a question as human beings we are trained to answer questions whether ourselves or by somebody else right so what are the criteria for a good statement number one it should be clearly phrased as a question how do i generate ideas for an exercise for a fulfilling retirement okay this is this is a, is a very strong question you should use active or strong words you know uh, how do i come up with ideas that's kind of a bit loose how do i generate ideas is a little more powerful you know so it goes a lot more the tone of the question changes it has to be me or i focus obviously since you're designing your own retirement it has to be me or i focus obviously you can't say how does aloysius's problem get solved that's not where we are going okay it has to be specific and succinct but keep one thing in mind when you're asking yourself the question it has to be me or i focus and it has to be a question it cannot be a statement okay all right and then we finally come to the step three and four which are combined you do a brainstorm and like i said earlier now you know who you are now you know what you're setting yourself to do so i have these hard skills i have these soft skills and i have my goal is to generate ideas for retirement right so how do i generate them generate some brainstorm and how do i prototype them so i'll talk about prototyping which is testing okay there are basically two big ways you can prototype one is prototype conversations which is far easier to do and the other one is prototype experiences which basically you are actually doing that stuff and that is a little harder to do right so let's say for example you say you know what I want to train seniors in how to use TikTok for making videos that they can send to their grandkids. Common problem. My parents have that problem, right? How do you use TikTok to talk to their grandkids? And I'm still in the process of training them, but anyway. So if you were putting together a training program for seniors, it's a damn good idea. But would you want to invest a lot of money and resources in developing it before knowing whether it works or not? I would, right? So what would I do? I would talk to somebody else, a younger trainer who has developed this program and is actually delivering it to seniors. You see, I can check with them. Say, you know what? I think of doing this program. How do you think it's a good idea? How do you, how long do you take to develop the content? How much does it cost? So on and so forth. So when you test out that idea with the person who's actually doing the program, you kind of go and think about it. And the guy says, you know, it costs like $10,000 to develop. And you go, oh, that's a lot of money in my retirement. I don't want to do it. At least you got your answer, right? The second one is shadowing. Let's say instead of talking to the person, you just follow the person when they're delivering a program. You, you're like a fly on the wall. You sit at the back and you just watch them while they deliver the content. They talk about engaging the senior class. Look at them and see what kind of interaction they force in the class. How do they develop that, right? So you can then start thinking about, does that work for me? Can I actually be like this trainer? You know, it's you literally shadow the person. And the experiences part is you do projects or you do internship. I think, honestly, like I said, it's a little tougher to do. But you can also do an internship with C3A and say, you know what? I want to do a three month internship for developing this program and seeing if it works. They might be happy to take you on if you've got the skill set, both hard and soft, right? So these are the prototyping methods, but there are the thing about prototyping, right? It has to be quick. It has to be cheap 
and you have to fail forward. By fail forward again, I link it to failure immunity. By fail forward means when you fail, you learn and you modify the prototype to test it out again. Okay. So now let me take you through a real life example. I mean, this is all theoretical stuff technically, right? I've lived through it and I've, my life has been designed in this way. But I'm going to talk to you about a workshop participant I had last year. His name is Mr. Jonathan Chen. Okay. He's a chartered accountant by training. He's like 60. Now he should be 61 years old or 62. I forget what it is. Uh, he's a chartered accountant and he worked in the finance department of various companies till he retired. So when he was close to retirement, he, retirement, he came up with the same problem. So what do I do next? So we took him the whole workshop, four day, we saw a four day workshop. So he kind of did a lot more work around it. But the sum and substance of what he did is here. He still followed the four step process, right? When he did the self awareness bit of it, what came up? What are the hard skills he had? He had auditing process skills, he knew Excel software, but he didn't know data science. You see? So he decided to upskill himself by taking a data science course, three month course at Skills Future. Okay? Obviously, given his age, given his Skills Future voucher, it was completely free. So he loved it, obviously. But more importantly to him, he picked up the latest techniques in data analysis. A CA is a data person, right? So it's very easy for him to do that. But he, he reskilled himself to do data science. What are his soft skills or his character strengths? His soft skills, he was a team player, obviously. He led teams before. He was he was the finance CFO of a company, so he knew how to lead teams. Uh, he was very good at problem solving. That was one of his character strengths. He was very, very good at problem solving. And of course, he had a significant he had an eye for detail. If you're an accountant, you need to have an eye for detail. Otherwise, you're gone dead in the water, right? So he his self-assessment threw up this. What was his problem? The way he expressed it is how do I generate ideas to utilize my skills in the new economy, to monetize my skills in the new economy? It's very specific, you see. The problem he said is, I don't want to work in the old economy anymore. I want to work in the new economy. And by new economy, he was going after the ESG, the sustainability, the renewables, the green economy. So in a brainstorm, so you see he has data skills, he has accounting skills. His problem is I want to generate ideas to monetize my skills in the new economy. So the first thing that came up for him is carbon credit tracking. Every company has a carbon footprint. And nowadays, the whole idea is to see if you can track that carbon footprint, right? How do you do that? How do you do the balancing of it? How do you account for it? How do you communicate it? Now, who better do it than a charter accountant? You see, because he had the skills and he had picked up data science. So he knew how to do it, right? How did he test out this idea though? He didn't go in and say, you know what? I'm offering this. No, he called up a friend of his who was, who works in an eco-sustainable manufacturing firm who wanted to be ESG positive. So the company wanted to go ahead, but they had no idea how to do it because these skills are nowadays in shortages, right? The, the demand is far higher than supply. So he talked to him and said, I can set up a carbon credit tracking or carbon footprint tracking scheme for you, a carbon credit mechanism. And I can do it because I have a chartered accountant and I have these skills. And would you want to try something with me? Right. And I think last month they just started a project whereby he's trying to develop that <coughs> the numbers for, for this company. He also said, okay, can I use my accounting services for SMB? Can I offer, which is kind of like a little whole world, but well, that's one of the ideas he came up with. And he said, let me try that. What happened with that? He went to SNEF and said, okay, which is the Singapore National Employees Federation and said, can you ask your members if they want these services? The response he got was, yeah, they want them, but they already have them because there are enough and more accountants now offering these services. So what's new? He would have been one among the many, right? So he looked at the prototype and said, you know what? Yeah, maybe I don't go there. Maybe I will go for the new economy stuff. Okay. So that's a real life example of Mr. Jonathan Chen. So just before <coughs> I finish uh, and say thank you, I just like to to kind of summarize the last 20, 25 minutes. When you decide to do stuff for retirement, when you decide 
when if you want to try out ideas for how you want to lead a retired life make sure you know your skill set you can monetize your skills in multiple ways you can monetize them financially as literally make money of them you can volunteer and use those skills it will also give you an idea of what new skills to pick up so make sure you know what your skill set is then make sure you articulated your question very well okay your question might well be how do i utilize my current soft skills in the volunteering space that's a good enough question okay because then you can see how to use them and then how do you generate ideas around them and how do you test them because remember you have to try stuff and you have to have a, a resistance to failure you have to build it up it's like a muscle you build up so when you try things you learn from them so when you keep trying you learn you keep trying you learn it's like a great lovely cycle you know you keep learning and you keep getting better at it so uh, once again uh, thank you so much for listening to me uh, if you guys want to contact me this is my contact details you can scan the qr code it will go straight into your contact list feel free to call me email me you can visit my site as well to see what all is happening there uh, but uh, i appreciate you devoting time to listening to us me on facebook so thank you so much and bye bye well he's not going away yet uh, everybody that's uh and thank you so much, Ravi, for that really illuminating presentation. I think it makes it a lot easier for everybody to, you know, to go in a systematic approach, yeah. right? But before we move on, though, I would like to remind you that if you have a question for any one of us, especially Ravi, just go onto Facebook, type in the comments, feedback, questions, so that we will do our very best to answer these questions, time permitting, right? Uh, one thing, though, don't make dedications. There's a different channel for that. So coming back to this, it is about um, today's topic, retirement, getting ready to retire. Now, just to give you a little bit of perspective, right? right now, nowadays for Singaporeans, we are talking about a life expectancy of somewhere in the 80s, 83 and 85, if I'm not wrong, for males and females, right? So if you're retiring at age 60, or if you are retired, or forced to retire at age 60 or whatever, right? You do have a 20 over years lifespan to figure out or to fill up what you're going to do there is, is really important and you know we talk about factoring inflation savings and everything for a lot of us myself included you know that will probably not last you through so what do you want to do do you want to figure out what you want to how you want to spend your time uh, and how do you want to do it well so you know i think for every one of us really is is very much about planning for your retirement as well and uh, yeah one key thing that i did pulled out from your presentation abhi was uh, <coughs> Yeah. Right. But um, with many people, it is about their own skills and whatnot. Maybe what I can do is to point it back first to you. Okay. Um, using the steps that you've kind of shared with everybody, right? How did you apply that for yourself? Because I'm, I'm looking at you, like, not retired, semi retired, but it, you know, you're there. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you find yourself getting to that position that you're in now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I mean, the reason I'm so committed to this is because I personally have gone through this. Uh, as a short story, I'll, I'll try and be quick about it. Right? Is I was a country manager in Australia. One morning I wake up and I say, what am I doing here? I was working for Lexmark at that point in time, right? which is a printer manufacturing company. And I go, what am I really doing here? I'm sitting in a hotel room and I'm wondering what to do next with my life. So the next morning I quit. I had no idea what I was going to do next, but I quit. I said, let me take the first step of cutting the email, the call. Then, of course, I, I went to Stanford and we did a, a workshop around designing your life. And the workshop essentially followed the same methodology. It kind of said, okay, what is it that really drives you? What gets you to wake up every morning, right? When we are working, what gets, to, what gets us to wake up every morning is that we have numbers to meet, we have commitments to meet. We have, you know, stuff like that, which is kind of like a more extrinsic way of looking at it. But what, after I quit, that extrinsic way was gone, right? So I had to actually sit down and figure out what is it that gets me out of bed in the morning. And during this phase of this workshop, I figured out that what got me out of bed was my ability to create content so that I could help people, right? The content creation piece and the piece where I could help people is actually what gets me out of bed every morning and because of that i started generating different ideas to do it so i am now a startup mentor 
I uh, so I advise startups on uh, on the business models. I teach entrepreneurship to school kids and college kids. I mentor entrepreneurship programs. I create online courses for entrepreneurship and resilience. Uh, so the the content creation and giving out this content is what brings me joy. And when I started doing it, I realized that okay, maybe that's a good thing that I could do for the next 15, 20 years of my life, right? Uh, it gives me great pleasure. It, it helps me wake up every morning. I don't wake up bored of life at any point in time. So Aloysius, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I think it does. And the thing is, um, what you've done basically is look at how you can be um, well nicely challenged over the next 25 years yeah. after post-retirement, or as you call it, post-rewirement, right? Uh, and, and today we have with us uh, Brian as well as Brahima. You definitely know who they are. So we're going to ask you right now, um, maybe I can start with ladies first. Yeah. Hima. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to ask you, what drives you to continue to be performing, you know, singing? And, and even, I understand you're also teaching uh, people how to sing, giving courses and all. Okay, firstly, um, I mean, music has always been my passion, right? And singing, entertaining. So I would like to um, explore it out, you know, like uh, give it at my age now, it's like giving back to them. And when they call me up, you know, to for courses like NSA want me to to give them a, a vocal coaching, it's uh, it's also an advantage for me to to meet uh, people like you know because when we sing on stage we just see people we, we just entertain up that finish mm. the contact gone you see yeah. but now it's like being with NSA uh, I can meet them you know like Singapore I mean the wings example and I can talk to them mm. and uh, singing for me now is like a it's vocal therapy it's more of a therapy voice you know woman my age so that it can uh, still I mean, people like to sing karaoke or whatever sometimes. But for me, it's also a therapy for myself that I can still go on right. with my singing. So in, in terms of sharing it's with like other people the, and teaching, but you're still also helping yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's a therapy for myself. So. Wonderful. And, you know, um, I think beyond that also, uh, I have to credit you because uh, the thing is that when we first thought about Vintage Radio, mm -hmm. right, and we came to you. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. So this is this is a real story, mm -hmm. right? So we went to Rahima and we're like, uh, Rahima, would you like, uh, you know, we, we were starting this radio station. Uh, uh, would you like to be a DJ? <laughs> you know, on the station. And, and you know what's the answer? Oh, I've, I'm singing, I'm presenting and all this. So I've always wanted to be a DJ. <laughs> and the chance, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Because I love challenge right. at my age, you know? I love challenge. Still, I love challenge because I find that um, if it falls in this category, why not? I learn, you know. It's so something. It. Yeah, it's still voice. It's still using my voice, and uh, and furthermore, with vintage, it's like uh, giving information. Not only uh, they listen to music, right, right, mm -hmm. and also gives me the opportunity to give them uh, information of what's happening in Singapore and what's happening around. But the, the, the thought of not ever being <laughs> never never, never crossed my mind. mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course I takut lah, first time. Because <laughs> I, I like Brian Richmond, wow, you know, and you know, all those, you know, pioneers like who me, DJ, you know, I, I never been a DJ in my life. So like giving this opportunity to me is like, well, okay, I take the challenge lah. Yeah. Try. If I fail, I learn again. <laughs> Like brilliant, that. brilliant. Because I never give up. Yeah. I think, yeah. and, the, and the other thing about you, Rahima, is this, right? Because we, uh, at Vintage Radio, uh, depend a lot on technology. Yeah. Right? So, after talking about being a DJ and all this, and then we say, oh, by the way, you have to do this, and you have to do it at home, because now it's COVID pandemic, yes. and also you, we got no studio. Yes. Right? And then you have to go online, you got to send everything into the cloud and all this, and then, but that didn't stop you. No, because that, that's why I say I love challenge. I love to learn something. And looking at uh, those uh, graphs like you all did, you know, on Radio Brian, you know, that's something new to me because all I do is like holding the mic and just let go of my voice and entertain people. But when we come to being DJ online and facing the my, the computer and learning your, like, Aloysius, you taught me how to go here, you know, the graph, you know, of where to record. And, 
that's very interesting for me. You know, it's something new, and even though you know for a long time, but I found something new for me, and it's a challenge. Like, wow, interesting! I would like to learn more. Yeah. yeah, well, and and that's that's the beauty about you know. I think the beauty about your attitude and your drive really is that, and and that's what we spoke about. You know, um, wanting to entertain, wanting to be able to do what you enjoy doing, and and it's got music, yeah, right, and it's about presenting and and making people happy. And you just jump straight into it. I don't think about it. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's like, hey, why not? You know, starting because I find that the younger ones, you know, like uh, people like, uh, I mean, not in my industry, see, like, oh, they know all this technology, and why not? I learn, you know, and I can do it myself. Even I ask you sometimes, uh, I know, can I go and sit and talk in between the songs? You know, like I, I don't know how to do that, you know. But he said, oh, you can do this. Then I said, oh, so, okay, can I do it? So it, it it really interests me. Yeah, great. Um, <laughs> thank you for that, Rahima. And and now over to you, Brian. I mean, Brian, you've you've been a stalwart as far as you know entertainment in Singapore is concerned. Sportscaster, sports commentary, football commentary. Uh, what else did I know? DJ. You you were the uh, first recipient of the Radio Achieve Lifetime Achievement Award, right? And for you, it's like been there, done that, done it all. What drives you to continue to do what you do? Because um, you're 75, right? mm. but you're still in touch with the music. You have a huge following of, of listeners who, you know, write in, call in, and go, hey, brother, it's nice. <laughs> what drives you? Well, um, I don't know how many of you know for a fact that I have been in the advertising business for many years, right? Uh, because that's the uh, one part of me that uh, is not exposed. So from there, uh, I used to do some uh, disco DJing at night. All right, this is being enterprising. And uh, on the weekends, I used to do all the part-time work on radio and TV, uh, hosting sports programs on television, and also you know, doing football commentary and all that, and also putting in a shift where radio is concerned. And uh, I've done that on, not only on radio, but on Rediffusion as well. So all that combined over the years, when I stopped working in the advertising business and started my own business, you know, my own company, where, you know, where, you know we're talking about uh, production work, all right? Uh, I had a production company for television, for filming, and production. And I had that company going as well. So along the way, I had my services retained by radio on a part-time basis. So my going from you know full-time to part-time, for me, was just... Just continuing what I was doing. So it's just really a natural it. flow. It was a natural progression, mm. you know. So for me, it's not like a, you know, it's not like a, a situation where you were sort of taken aback and wondering, hey, well, how do I do this or, you know. No, it's there already. The mole has been cast, you know, and I just continue. But it's just that uh, I'm not going to do whatever I used to do on a full-time basis. I just continue doing what I enjoy doing most. Right. But um, Brian, again for you also, I, I've got to put this to you because um, coming onto Vintage Radio, the challenge was for you was really understanding like, huh, what's the cloud? What cloud? What cloud? <laughs> right. But that didn't stop you, right? Um, and, and you picked it up and right now, you know, you are basically operating on your own. You don't need <laughs> us anymore. <laughs> right, right. I feel neglected. But... <laughs> But, you know, um, what, what was, I suppose, what made you want to continue learning was the fact that you, you, that allowed you to continue doing what you enjoy, what you love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I started during the time when we were playing uh, records, all right? Those were the days when, you know, I started with playing uh, uh, records and then, uh, you know, cartridges open reel tapes and all that and then of course we developed into the computer the computer came about and the computer took over the role of the vinyl and uh, so along the ways when i was asked by you to come in and do some work on vintage radio sg 
and uh, I was, you know, I was advised and I was taught by you, this is what you're going to do, this is what you're going to do for our production. As far as our work is concerned, this is how it's going to go. And I was willing to learn because life so is, you know, it's continually a learning process. We are constantly learning new things. And I look forward to it. You know, it's something that I learn for the first time. And I'm doing it and happily doing it. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm glad for you to be sharing that, both you, Rahima, and, and you, Brian. Uh, because I think it, during the time that we have at Vintage Radio, right, um, one of the things that we always come across is a lot of people seniors and, and not even seniors sometimes right telling us uh, I'm not tech savvy right but for the fact that right now if you are watching us on FB and then you have a mobile phone and that you can use that to call somebody you are tech savvy so um, let, let's let's have that mindset change and I think I mean that's one of the things that we spoke about as well that you spoke about it is really a mindset change because yeah. um, from the time of uh, what was in the past when we spoke about retirement right uh, people think about retirement at age 55, 60, 62 and all this and then after that, that's it, I chill and relax. But right now, life expectancy is, is like I mentioned, 83 to 85, right? So really, it's, it's about really having that time to have truly your golden age be your golden age itself and not just to waste away, right? So um, right now, I'd like to turn it around on me. Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> at age 55, what would you advise me, Abhi? How would you advise me to continue planning uh, for my retirement? <laughs> 55. You're too young. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, I would actually, you know, one of the things I would clearly suggest you do is figure out what really gets you out of bed every morning. Which aspect of what drives you. And I can tell you that's not easy to figure out. It took me like days to figure out what got me out of bed every morning. Right? You got to go through it and you kind of ask people around you. There's a tool available which helps you identify it from your everyday activities. Right? There's a tool which says, okay, which activity really got you engaged, which gave you energy. And when you map all those across two, three weeks of your life, you know pretty much what, uh, you know, what really drives you. Once you get that, then you say, okay, what can I do with it? In a way, right? So, First thing I would advise you is to get that going. Yeah, you do the self-assessment on your six facets. But I just want to echo what Rahima and Brian also talked about just now. And I saw that expressed in the way they were talking. Rahima said about the DJ job, I just tried it. I'm like, wow, <laughs> there it is. There is that mindset. I'm trying stuff. You Never know, mind I'm, if I fail. I, I might fail, but hey, what the hell? I don't know what's about. I'm trying it. Number one, Brian mentioned lifelong learning. He doesn't fear learning. For him, learning is energizing. When I get to learn something new, of course I love it. But throughout his activity, you see he's been doing that, right? Do radio DJ somewhere, vinyl somewhere, talk, go advertising somewhere, give voiceovers. There are different facets of a person who's trying stuff and doing and learning along the way, right? It might be good for you to contemplate whether you have that with you. In your life, when you look back on it, have you tried a ton of stuff? What does failure mean to you? Does it mean, oh shit, it's not good? Or does it mean, sure, I tried, I fine, let's move on, right? I learned something. So, my suggestion to you would be just get at this and the rest of the process will naturally follow. Okay, well, thanks for that. Um, I guess I need some quiet time then. <laughs> uh, okay. You need wine time, that is so true. It's best done with a glass of wine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Point of that. So the thing is that earlier we mentioned to you that if you have questions, yes, I put on my glasses, reading glasses. If you have questions, um, go onto Facebook, uh, send that over to us and we'll try our best to answer. And we've got quite a few questions here. So I'm going to start off. Let me see now. Um, you mentioned monetizing our skills in the new economy. What skills should seniors pick up to stay relevant in the workforce and also prepare for retirement later? I'm going to say the very first thing that you do is get as much of digital as possible because you can't run away from that, right? And what what other advice would you have, Abhi? Uh, I would clearly say you look at your, your character strengths, number one. 
Number two, look at soft skills. Your soft skills are always fungible. By fungible, I mean soft skills can go across industries. You can use them anywhere you want. So let's come to the tricky point of what hard skills, because people don't pay for soft skills. You see, people pay for hard skills. Now, the, the hard skills you pick up has, you have now the opportunity of picking up hard skills which you really wanted to pick up, which you really wanted to enjoy doing. So let me give an example, right? If you love writing, 30 years ago or 20 years ago, you could be a writer and earn nothing. You could be a very poor writer struggling for life, right? Unless you published a ton of books and became a multimillionaire, writing was not a paying job. But do you know in the new economy, writing is a paying job? You can create content. People will pay for quality content. But before you do that, you have to learn how to write for blogs, how to write for the digital world, because that's how the content is going to get read. So as an example, so I would suggest you do pick up your hard skills around what your interests are, around what really gets you going. So you should feel good after writing an article of 500 words and say, yes, this was, these are, these are my words. And I like seeing them on the screen. Okay, so I hope that answers that question. Well, just to add on to that really is that your life skills and your experience really adds value to what you write. So, you know, I mean, I, I take it that when you talk about writing skills, it's very much um, figuring out how to write properly, but to be able to express from your experience. Right. So you're actually marrying the two together. Yes. And that's a great point, Alasha, because I think that's an asset only you have. Exactly. You know, and a 20 year old can't write about a 50 year old experience in life because unless they, they, they unless not they live to 30 years it. yeah unless they pay for it yeah oh yeah of course that <laughs> they can. Yeah. oh that is big <laughs> that's, uh, that's not good okay let's move on with more questions again if you do have questions do send it to us uh, via facebook chat itself and uh, we'll read out as much as we can so here we go how do you achieve work-life balance at age 60 Ooh, okay uh, i'm gonna throw this to you Raima. Ooh. how do you achieve work-life experience because uh, work-life balance rather. I mean, you've got your family and then you've got your wider family and then you've got your fans. Okay, I normally have a routine like, you know, I know I just uh, have my, uh, it's a daily basis actually. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, you just move along and then you know your routine well, like morning you wake up, you do your prayers and then you do your breakfast and then that's it. And then uh, you prepare. Right. For my uh, work, vintage, you know, like <laughs> whatever. Then I will go like uh, another routine, like for my recording. So whatever I do now at my age, I make sure that by uh, I always say, okay, if you want me to work outside, I will I will balance it up. I say, okay, by eight I have to be home. Right. The latest. Because your family still eats the yes, food that you cook. Yes. <laughs> She's by the way a very good cook. <laughs> Yet to be invited. I like my two cats at home. So ah. I need to feed them too. <laughs> what about you, Brian? How how do you you know have work life balance? Because you know you've got your family, and then now you've got your grandson and your kids and all that. Yep. Yeah. I always spend time with my grandson. <laughs> you know, whenever I get the opportunity, and whatever I do aside from work, I always make time for the family yep. and for close friends. So well, that's the reason, you know, I, I have my sanity. Well, I think that's good. And, and, you know, on one hand, you're keeping busy working on vintage radio, mm -hmm. doing your shows and then your weekend shows as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, from time to time, I know that you've also volunteered for church. Yeah. Right. And then you have your family as well. And, and I, I know your family very well. You guys are so close knit. And, and that just shows that, you know, you really have that. What about you, Abhi? Uh, I... I have, a quite, I have a bit of a controversial answer, oh. which is that work-life balance is a myth. Okay. Uh, and the reason I say is that in the earlier, before the digital age hit, you could do, you go into office, you work, you leave, right? And that's it. There's no way to contact you after that, mm -hmm. right? So you just walked away. Uh, in the new world, I think what is increasingly happening is that it's all enmeshed. You got emails coming in, you suddenly look at your phone, some email comes up, you answer it. That's work, right? And in the middle of you looking, talking to your grandson or grandkid or whatever it is. So that whole thing, the way digital technologies have pervaded in our lives, 
it's all one giant soup now whether it's work whether it's life it's all one giant soup and the only way you can achieve any balance i think is switch off the digital button <laughs> get out be out of contact of the grid then you may have a bit of a life uh my view but uh yeah you know that that's actually a very very interesting yeah. look at it um especially for people who are actually in media i suppose you know and then yeah. if you're dealing with uh, multi uh, if you're in dealing in communications and all this right um, you know your your social media is on 24 7 like yeah. it or not yeah. right so yeah you have to be on all the time but it doesn't have to be all consuming i guess like what you said yeah. you know to do to be able to switch off but perhaps in today's day and age it's not completely switched off and i'm looking behind the camera at some of the interns that's spending their time with us uh, at vintage radio sg um because the thing is that as you move forward, like what you said, the digital technology comes into place and especially if you are in communications, there's really no break. But it is about perhaps being able to tag team with other people in the team, right? So you take today, I take tomorrow yeah. night or something yeah. like that. But have a plan and not be all consumed. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yes. and still value your family time yeah. and your friend time and the me time, of yes. course. Yeah, cool. Um, more questions coming in. Thank you so much. We will Vintage Radio want to train seniors oh, who aspire to be a DJ or train them to become volunteers for Vintage Radio. Um, speaking on behalf of the other two uh, directors, <laughs> yes. <laughs> get in touch with us. 8846-8849. Use the app. WhatsApp us. We'll get in touch with you. Always welcoming to, uh, especially for volunteers uh, for the activities that we do. Um, you know, especially it'll, it'll be a chance for you to learn a new skill and also to interact with other seniors as well. And I applaud you for sending that question in. Um, please, yes, we do we do need your help to, to as volunteers. Okay, next question. How does one plan their retirement if they don't have hobbies, interests, and are not sure where to begin? This is an Avi question. Okay, uh, just so I understand the question. Somebody said that they don't have hobbies, mm -hmm. they don't have interests, and? Uh, they're not sure where to begin. They're not sure where to begin. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay. If you're on this earth, you have hobbies and interests. You may not know what they are. You may not think they're important enough to be counted as hobbies or interests. But in my life, in my experience so far, I've yet to come across somebody who has zero hobbies and zero interests. The important thing would be to find out what they are. So that's the first step, right? Uh, and there is a tool available for that, which is where you map your daily activities on a grid of energy and involvement. What is, what is high involvement? High energy. For example, uh, cooking is a high involvement activity right and rahima will clearly endorse that view but to rahima it's also high energy activity because she loves the joy that her cooking brings her family or her friends so for her it is it's an interest it's a great hobby it's good to cultivate whereas for me it's just high involvement there's no energy i'm cooking if i do need to cook because i need to eat okay that's where it stops. So there's this tool available which will help you list out your activities on a grid of energy and involvement. And when you you will find some activities give you very high you give you very high energy and which are very high involvement. That's your hobbies and interests. So that would be the first place I would suggest to start. Uh, and that doesn't matter whether you are getting into retirement or not. It just matters for life, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you look at Go back to your work-life balance thing that Aloysius mentioned. Life is about interests, hobbies, families, stuff like that, right? Work is not. Uh, so I would suggest you start there. Good point, Abhi. And I think um, maybe just to add to that would be, you know, um, take some time to, to, to discover yourself or rediscover yourself, you know, be it with your partner, with your friends, and see really what drives you. And, and I think that comes back to what we touched on earlier. Right. Right. What drives you? What gets you out of bed in the morning beyond work? Right. Um, some of us might find that 
the work that we do, um, you know, makes us f feel fulfilled. Yeah. Certain elements of that can come into play. Yeah. You know, um, volunteering could also be another option for you to th to consider. Now, moving on with more questions. Thank you so much for, for sending them in. Um, hi. Think having sufficient retirement fund is the most important resources which determine our retirement age as inflation keeps increasing. Any tip on making more at this age? Thank you. Hmm. Okay. If I may jump in. Yes, Brian. Aloy, uh, I would like to direct them to NSA, the National Silver Academy. Academy. Right. Right. There are hundreds of courses really literally hundreds of courses it can send you around the bend and uh, just looking at those uh, courses you can actually discover something which might be of interest to you and you can attend these courses and develop yourself and create a new career for all you know wow, in, in this area that's that's one answer for two questions by the way <laughs> I, and that's a good point. Um, just to add to it though, um, for some of us, going to a website with uh, a lot of causes, a lot of listings there might be very daunting yeah. itself, right? But this is where I think your family comes into play. Okay, you have kids, you've got grandkids who probably can, you know, be there to help you navigate through. And, and that's what I would encourage, um, you know, the younger set to do, uh, or for you to just engage with your, your grandchildren or your children because um, you're talking about intergenerational uh, interaction. You're talking about, you know, letting them turn the tables around and say, you know, it's time for me to help you as well. And for the younger ones, really, I think um, that's what you should be doing. You know, help your parents, help, you know, help your aged uh, relatives as well to figure out, you know, what is it that, what else can they do, right, to, to be more relevant in this new age. Yeah. Okay. More questions here. If I'm a low-wage worker, how should I plan properly for retirement since I don't have much savings? I think the first thing is let's not talk about retirement. I mean, that's, that's a, you know, a milestone, right? But really is to, again, look at how you can upskill, reskill perhaps. I mean, you can learn a little bit more. Uh, yes. I, you know, one of the, I think it's a great question because one of the challenges faced by low-wage workers actually is... Uh, I can't stop working. I can't afford to stop working. And it's a real challenge. And you would think that in Singapore, the challenge doesn't exist. I can assure you it exists. And uh, between NUS, uh, the civil services team, PSD, public services division, uh, and designing your life, we are trying to figure out how do we help low wage workers to actually reskill upskill or even invest something which will help them monetize their skills and it's a challenge i mean to be fair it's a challenge right? how do you i just think when i think of a low skill work low wage work i think of the 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 security guard in my condo right uh, if you there are different opportunities come up which is if you if the if they get more digitally savvy then they can contribute more to the security of a condo or of a company, right? Uh, so they don't have to be going around trying to monitor all the exits or see who's coming in. They just learn how to monitor the cameras and, and help security, right? Uh, but honestly, uh, I think it's a challenge, right? And uh, breaking, I, even earlier to an earlier question, you need a certain level of financial security for sure before you have the luxury of thinking about what do I do in my retirement which should be fulfilling. And I'll be honest about it. It's not a it's not an easy answer. I'm sorry if that didn't help, but well I think um Abhi, you, you've pointed out a few things and, and to go back to the presentation that you did earlier, um the part about curiosity comes into play. Right. Yes. To be curious, to always ask questions. And I would encourage everyone to be thinking about how I can do this better, how I can do my current job better. Yes. And that leads to opportunities, I suppose. You know, and um, let's let's turn the, the, the thinking towards more of a positive side. Sure. You know, and um, let's not spend too much energy going like, oh, you know, I should have done this. Oh, the government should give me to this and all that. Right. Um, in, in other words, let's let's 
not waste the energy that we have on you know the pardon me for using that word pitching right but really you know look forward and, and think about ways that you can actually improve yourself yeah. on right um the other thing though and uh this is from the work that we do at vintage radio sg um we work very closely with the agency for integrated care aic oh. and under them there's of course the silver generation office silver generation ambassadors so for um retirees and all that you know it's it's I would encourage you to spend some time talking to the SGAs, Silver Generation Ambassadors as well. Right? They are the ones who know a little bit more about the plans and the opportunities that there are that, that, that's provided for you. So don't be shy in asking for it. I, I, would, I would put this very carefully to say, don't be looking for a handout, but look for a helping hand. Yes. Right. I think that, that would be the message. I um, think just, so I'll say, sure. if I may, uh, an, an example just came to my mind. Uh, of a, I won't call him a low wage worker, but he's clearly blue collar. He was a refriger refrigeration technician. So his job was just servicing all the cold storages in this country. And a friend of mine kind of introduced us and said, listen, why don't we figure out what to do, how you can help him. He's like 76 years old and he's like, I don't know what to do because nobody wants to give me servicing jobs anymore. They think I'm too old, right? Because they can't get stuff. So when we were chatting, one of the ideas that came up is he has a reservoir of knowledge. He has a ton of knowledge, experience, saying if these are the issues, this is what you do. You know, the question was, how do you translate that into content, which can then be passed on on a wider level? So he actually did a very smart thing. He has a grandkid who decided to put up videos on YouTube for how to solve typical problems that came up in cold storages right and he started saying okay maybe i can start doing this as in he was talking on the video he would show how it worked while the kid while his grandkid was recording the youtube video and putting it up and then of course then the question came about how do you monetize youtube because you have only one way to monetize advertising right who advertises this right but the thing was he was planning on taking bits of this video to servicing company and say, I can create this content for you and you can train your junior engineers that way, right? So I thought this was a brilliant opportunity of the way he used his knowledge to create content for a larger amount of people, right? But I would like to add to that also the fact that he's got his grandkid to yeah, help him. See, that's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. So the grandkid was involved in the production. Exactly. And then I think that's beautiful because yeah. um, instead of just the grandkid going like, yeah you know in their own world uh, they're actually bringing the skills that they have and and you know the knowledge that they have right. and helping grandpa right. brilliant beautiful okay we've got time for one last question and this comes to us at vintage radio i enjoy listening to vintage radio sg two thumbs up thank you very much um how did every single one of you plan for retirement what are some of the key retirement planning steps to take um I'm not retired yet. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Who's retired here? Nobody. Huh? Nobody's retired yeah, here. Yeah, actually, nobody's retired. <laughs> and that's working. the beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, speaking on behalf of uh, Bala uh, and Xianhua yeah. as well, right? Yeah. Both of them are equally busy um, mm. as Rahima and Brian as well. But they all have their work life balance. They spend time with the family. I yeah. know uh, Patrick, Kuo Xianhua, he swims like twice a week three times a week if i got that correct yeah you know that's part of his re uh, routine or regimen to keep fit yeah. and he doesn't look a day beyond 55 even though he's 70 mm. something without wow. sharing his age months right so um and then yeah you have bala as well who's who's you know huge in the community and uh he spends his time with his family as well and he's also not really retired and yeah and you heard from brian and rahima as well so really um, our minds have already been rewired to not think about retirement in that sense in the traditional sense of like okay i'm 60 or 62 blah blah that's it bye bye don't have to work sit at home and rot no um i think the the whole thing that we've approached it is that you know we've we've still got a journey let's see how we can enjoy this leg of the journey mm. itself you know, and bring joy to other people, speaking on behalf of, of all of you at Vintage Radio. Yeah. The things that we do every day is, is to try and bring about 
relief to our community, for our seniors, right? Mm. Uh, for you to have your music, to be able to listen to them, uh, for you to be able to uh, listen to Brian, his stories, uh, today in history and stuff like that, and from Rahima as well, you know, and to bring back music that you are familiar with. So, mm. um, I guess my answer to that is that, you know, we, we're not thinking about retirement. Yeah. We're thinking about living. Yeah. Okay, Correct. move from forward, move on. Yeah, move on, yes. Yeah, especially <laughs> with my grandchild, my grandchildren. Now they taught me, uh, because I, I did TikTok also, so mm. like, Hirak was just passed, right? Mm. So they did TikTok on me, and then they, they don't know how to, uh, you know, uh, cut it, edit, edit it. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, uh, Popo, can you teach me how to do it? So I did it for them. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Popo oh. teaches them how to edit. Oh my goodness. So together, yeah. Brilliant. That, brilliant. Video, that is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. That is so brilliant. Mm. Well, um, I think we've pretty much come yeah. to the end of our time here. In fact, we've exceeded one hour, which is great. Thank you so much for all the questions that you have for us. But before we sign off, I think uh, what we'd like to do is to, first of all, thank Abhi. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks, and uh, Brian and Rahima, thank you for taking time thank out you. to share your experiences with everybody here. And we hope that what we have shared today really have energized you to, um, you know, figure out and, and plan for your retirement, but not so much as retiring, but really continue to have um, you know, an active lifestyle, uh, you know, at age, for me at age 55, I've got hopefully another 30 years in front of me and that's, that's something to look forward to, I guess, you know, and for everybody, there's still that, that stretch ahead, right? So how do we, you know, live that to be our real golden age, so to speak, right? So again, thank you very much for tuning in to us. Uh, before we go, just to share with you a couple of things that you should know about. I would really encourage you all to join us for the virtual roadshow, the NSA virtual roadshow, and to learn more about designing for a 100-year life course by National University of Singapore, you can contact Evelyn at the following um, email address that you see on the screen now. We're going to leave it there so that you can actually copy it down or screenshot or take out your phone now and snap it. Or if you want to, you can actually go to the very first QR code that's on the right of the screen right now. Okay. The other thing is that, of course, if you find our talk useful, do like and share the video with your family and friends and help them pick up the useful tips uh, at their own pace and convenience. And finally, you can call the number that you see there or visit the NSA website to explore the many learning opportunities for seniors age 50 and above. And yes, there's another QR code for there. Um, again, a reminder that this video, if you just joined in, I don't know from which rock you crawled out from under, but hello, uh, you missed it all, but you can always catch it again uh, on the C3A Facebook page, or you can come to Vintage Radio SG on our video content page. It's all there as well. Uh, we hope that you find this useful and uh, we look forward to uh, catching you again sometime soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.